In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and God, amen. May the Lord bestow upon us his blessing, mercy, grace, and wisdom, now and ever into the age of ages, amen. Today is which Sunday, the blessed month of Kek? One, two, three, four. The third, right? So in the third Sunday, it's basically the middle. So we start the first two with uh, an announcements of, and visitation of the Archangel Gabriel. Um, right? The first Sunday was Archangel Gabriel going to Zacharias the priest, right? Last Sunday, he went to the Holy Virgin Mary. Okay, today is in the middle. So there's, instead of the visitation of the Archangel, it's the visitation of the Holy Virgin Mary herself to uh, Elizabeth, right? And then after this, instead of the visitation of the angel, we have the visitation of, of the person, right? So, um, John the Baptist, we uh, is uh, we read about his birth next Sunday, and then for the feast um, or the the night before the feast, we we read of the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world. Right. So the general theme here, um, or one of them, is the visitations. Right. Not only of the angels, but of John the Baptist, of the Lord Himself, and uh, today is the visitation of the holy the, the mothers. Um, or um, actually the Lord himself visits uh, John the Baptist, uh, in, 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 uh, so to speak. Right? <clears throat> so basically we pick up where we left off last Sunday, um, and after hearing the announcement of the Holy Birth um, or uh, the Incarnation, the Holy Virgin Mary decides to do what? Instead of focusing on herself, she goes. She goes and, and um, travels quite a bit of, of distance, um, not very easy terrain, even though she's pregnant, as we know. Um, it doesn't matter. Uh, she goes to serve um, her, her relative and the, the, the mother of the forerunner, right? <clears throat> and, and she stays for how long, as we hear her today? Three months, right? She stays uh, three months um, <clears throat> according to um, St. Luke. <clears throat> so today we see the visitation and um, the uh, the greetings that they ex exchange with, with each other, right? And then um, St. Mary, as, as we kind of mentioned last week, um, gives her praise, the most beautiful praise, or one of the most beautiful praises that we have in Scripture. Um, and I'm sure... Um, theologians and um, scholars alike can spend years um, deciphering um, the, the, the power and the beauty and the theology in, in this one, um, the, the longest, um, I believe, uh, passage we have that came out of the mouth of the Holy Virgin. <clears throat> okay. um, and in it, she says many things. We've studied this before and we probably will again. Um, but uh, today we focus a little bit more about what she is proclaiming, what is she is speaking about, and what the meaning of the celebration of this whole time of year is, right? The coming of the Savior into the world, the, the, the greatest gift that mankind has ever or will ever receive. <clears throat> and so um, when we see this um, and we, because, you know, the Christmas time, we think about the gifts what we will receive, what we should give, and all of that. But we shouldn't um, overlook the most important gift that we have received or will ever receive, which is the Lord. Um, and this is a gift that, like we say, keeps on giving because it, it, it is a daily experience that we have with the Lord that makes the remembrance of his coming into the world so powerful and so important and so special for each and every one of us. <clears throat> And so we know this, right, when we speak about gifts. So some people say what, one reason why we give gifts um, during this time is in remembrance or following whom? Who gave gifts? You know, the three wise men, right, the magi. Um, we're kind of skipping ahead, I know, um, <clears throat> but... Uh, I think the importance of, of contemplating on this should last a few weeks. Um, 
or, or longer, right? So when the three wise men came, as, as we said last week, they didn't come to the manger. They came where? It's up there. They came to the house. They didn't come the night of the feast, or they didn't kind of come the, the birth of the birthday of, of the Lord. They came later. Um, he was not a baby. He was a young child, as, as St. Luke describes. It says, when they had come, but they started their journey, most likely um, during the time, um, for they also had um, seen the signs that the Lord had given to them. Right? <clears throat> so, so when had they come into the house? They saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. This was the main purpose of them to come, right? And when they had opened their treasures, they presented to him gifts to him, gold, frankincense, and myrrh, right? <clears throat> um, and in a sense, we should put ourselves in their place. As we do oftentimes when we read scripture, it's, it's a good exercise to place yourself in different places or um, of, of different characters when you read the same event. Um, so you can say, well, what was St. Mary uh, uh, experiencing at this moment? What was St. Joseph experiencing at this moment? What were the shepherds experiencing at this moment? What were um, the three wise men experiencing, right? So if I want to be like them, right, I find out where he is. I go to him. I fall down and worship him, and I offer whatever I can to him. And what we offer has a lot to do with this, these three gifts, um, symbolically, um, not necessarily literally, <clears throat> or it can be literally as well. Um, so the three gifts symbolize what we know. Gold. Yes. So the gold reminds us of the king, right? The king of kings, right? Um, and the eternity, like, because you know, we know, like, gold basically doesn't rust. That's one reason why we have gold in the icons to remind us of the eternity um, or the long lasting um, life in paradise or in heaven, right? Um, so his kingdom, of his kingdom, there shall be no end, right? So th there's more than one meaning. Uh, to the use of this gold. <clears throat> but um, when uh, when we see the, the gold um, that is given by the king to the king of kings, we begin to understand. And it should also remind us of the 24 priests in, in, in uh, the book of Revelation who had crowns of gold on their heads and they had golden censers full of incense and they offered um, the, and even when they came to worship, they put their their um, uh, crowns on their chairs so that they could worship um, <clears throat> him instead of being worshipped, so to speak. Right. So in a sense here, the gold is the gift that's offered from one king to another, singing, signifying the king of kings, the true majesty of, of the, the Lord Jesus Christ, who is God, as we know and as they knew. Um, so um, these gifts reveal to us who the Lord is, right? And also what we should do um, when when we give, right? Um, and so uh, the as we were saying before, the incarnation itself reminds us of the gift of the King who came and humbled himself and took the form of a servant um, to raise the stature of his children to be like his or close to his, right? As um, as St. Uh, Paul says in the, to the Corinthians, he says, um, he was rich, but he became poor for our sakes. Why? That he might make many rich, okay, by his poverty. Um, and St. Cyril also says this, if he didn't become poor, then he could not make us rich, Um Again, not with the worldly riches, because he said, my kingdom is not of this world. And so then we remember our kingdom also is not of this world. And so when we give to the Lord anything um, or anything, so the idea is we have to give to him something that's valuable to us, that has to do with this world. Why? To say, my value is not in this thing, 
and and even though I hold it in high esteem, you are higher. And what you give to me is more important. And this is a token of, of my acceptance that your kingdom is more important than this world. Right? So this is a, a, something that we do uh, on, a, on hopefully a regular basis. The idea of, of giving to him anything and everything. And when we do that, we're able to do that for others as well. <clears throat> okay? um, we'll come back to this you know, at the end. Um, so the second thing that was offered is frankincense, and that reminds us of not that he is king, but that he is priest, right? Um, priest because the priest offers incense, right? Um, and we see this in the Old Testament with Aaron and so so on and so forth. And we see this in, in um, the book of Revelation with the same 24 priests that we just spoke of, right? <clears throat> but St. John describes these this incense as reminding us of the prayers of the saints because they ascend, the incense rises up to, to the sky, to heaven, right? So when we offer, we don't just offer the things of this world that are valuable to us, but we offer our prayers in connection to the Lord, right? And we, this is what the three magi did. The first, again, the first thing they did was what? Before offering gifts, they did what? They fell down and worshipped him. Right? That's that's ultimately what um, they were there for. Um, the gifts were, I think, were more secondary. Um, <clears throat> uh, so, um, the gift of frankincense is is taken to signify that um, who do we offer incense to? God, right? We also sometimes. Uh, raise incense in veneration towards the saints, but ultimately it's God. And so when they offered him frankincense, they're also not just signifying that he is the great archpriest, but that he is also God. Um, and so these, uh, St. Saint, Saint Luke um, describes these details intentionally to, to, to remind us of what they signify, not just the act itself. And that's why our church, thankfully, is, is, is so deep and so rich in, in the theolo theology and understanding. We don't just study um, or recall these uh, details in Scripture, especially when it has to do with the advent and the coming of Christ. We're not superficial. We go deeper into, into the, the mysteries so we can um, improve or deepen our worship and our relationship with the Lord. That's ultimately what we do. Um, all the other things, like we said last week, are secondary, um, and it's okay to do those things, but we make sure that we don't leave the more important things undone, um, as the scripture says. <clears throat> okay, um, and so the last um, gift was myrrh, right? And the myrrh reminds us of, signifies the suffering of the Lord, because Typically, it's red in color, and it's a viscous liquid, um, and it looks like, like blood, but also smells bitter. So it reminds us, um, or, or it tastes bitter, but it actually smells uh, very nice, right? To, to show the, the, the twofold um, blessing behind the cross. Um, and it was also used to prepare the body for burial, um, and sometimes it was used as a medicine as well. Um, and it's, it's in Scripture in the Old Testament. And, and even the, the mixture of spices and oils they used to, um, to bury the Lord included especially myrrh, at myrrh as um, the evangelists describe, right? <clears throat> um, especially St. John. Right? Um, so, um, so when the, you think when, when the Magi would come to offer gifts, it would have nothing to do with the cross, but it has everything to do with the cross because that, as we've said before, that's the main purpose of his coming, not only to teach us the way of salvation, but to give us salvation through his um, precious sacrifice on the cross. And so even in this joyful time of his birth, we're reminded of his sacrifice. Um, and so that's why these Magi sacrificed a lot. They probably traveled for months, right, just um, to, to see him 
and to worship him and to offer him a small token of uh, of their um, reverence toward him. Um, but it was well worth it. He said, this is the one that, that's going to die on the cross. Oh, we have to go. So this helps encourage us when we get tired when it comes to prayer or um, we, we feel lazy when it comes to reading scripture or attending the church early or whatever it might be. Um, the, these magi put us to shame um, when, it, when, when we see how diligent they were. Um, same thing with the Holy Virgin, of course, as we mentioned before, diligent in, in, in focusing on what is um, heavenly and what is um, primary rather than the secondary things that sometimes we get tripped up in. Um, <clears throat> so as we've said, the greatest gift of all is the Lord. And uh, St. Athanasius, um, on the incarnation, we recommend that this is a good time for, for people to uh, read um, this this book um, because he he describes so beautifully and so succinctly um, the purpose of the, not only the birth of Christ but the life of Christ um, and um, he starts with the incarnation and the purpose of the incarnation um, which has to do with you know, Adam starting from Adam and Eve and then continues to to the the, the death and resurrection of the Lord. <clears throat> So here, St. Athanasius says, uh, here then is the second reason. Um, uh, he gives more than one reason. Um, why the Lord, or the Logos, dwelt among us. He said, namely, that having proved his Godhead by his works, he might offer the sacrifice on behalf of all. Um, and St. Paul says this many places uh, elsewhere. Right? Um, surrendering his own temple, his body, to death in place of all, to settle man's account with death and free him from the primal transgression. So this was the main purpose of his coming. Um, uh, it's not just to sit with his people and listen to them and give them a couple of words. No, it's, it's to remove um, the, or to pay the price, uh, as he says, settle man's account with death and free him. Um, so this is the, the, the great gift that he, he uh, has given to us. Um, <clears throat> one uh, other uh, summary that I thought was nice, and we'll conclude uh, in a couple minutes. He says, um, uh, St. Gregory, uh, Gregory the Great, uh, I think he was in the 5th or 6th century um, in Rome, he says, uh, there's something more that must be understood about the gold, incense, and myrrh. Solomon, so he first he brings the scripture from the Old Testament of, of, of prophecies relating to this. He says, Solomon testifies that gold symbolizes wisdom when he says a pleasing treasure lies in the mouth of the wise. So instead of here saying that the royal to um, reflecting that the Lord is the King of Kings. He says, well, for us, we offer or we search for wisdom. He says, the psalmist bears witness to the incense, which prayer offers to God when he says, let my prayer ascend as incense in your sight and the lifting up my hands as the evening sacrifice. Uh, actually, I think we've mentioned this before, but the, this is one of the Psalms, Psalm 140, that the priest recites in the raising of incense in the evening um, after uh after the Thanksgiving prayer. Right? <clears throat> so when we come to pray and to lift up our hands, we say, this is my offering that I give to you. Um, just as the incense that was brought to you as the young child in, um, in, in a few, few days or weeks after your birth, I offer you um, my prayers. I offer you to lifting up my hands, the sacrifice, um, just like you lifted up um, your hands on, on the holy wood of the cross, not just like, but in, in we take him as, as, as an encouragement for that. Of course, our sacrifice is incomparable to his. Um, then he says the mirror indicate, indicates the mortification of our bodies, which the Holy Church speaks of. It's workmen who strive even unto death on behalf of God. My hands dripped with myrrh. Um, and so he says, um, okay, so just like this is a reminder of his sacrifice, then I need to, to give until it hurts, as one of the saints said. Uh, then he says, and so do we offer to gold to the newborn king if we shine in the sight with the brightness of the wisdom from on high. So when we grow in wisdom and grow in him, we shine like gold, he's saying. Um, we too offer in him incense if we enkindle on the altar of our hearts the thoughts of our human minds by the holy pursuit of prayer. So this is the offering of him. So we can go to him like the three wise men, offer him gold by growing in wisdom 
offer him prayer um, as incense um, so as to give a, a sweet smell to God by our heavenly desire and we offer him myrrh if we mortify the vices of our bodies by our self-denial. Um, so this is kind of like the, the practical application of how we offer when we come to into the presence of God um, we offer him not a present but our presence. That makes sense? So the, be the best present we offer to him is our, to be present with him. Um, and that applies to others as well. Right? So when we give to others, that's after we learn how to give to God the right thing. Um, so we, we give something that has value and meaning. We give um, something that helps the person's spiritual growth. We don't worship them, but we help them in their worship. Right? We give sacrifice. We sacrifice ourselves for them just like the Lord um, gave himself uh, for us. Right? So ultimately, he is the goal, but he is the means by which we also attain the goal, by following his steps and his example, by offering him daily um, these three things. We learn also to offer to others um, th these three things, and we become wiser like the Magi, um, and we become... Um, uh, more like him. Uh, glory be to him now and from to the age of age. We may.